Hey guys, welcome to the Mount Lake Terrace High School shop. This is Mr. Wilson. On the camera is Mr. Smelser. And uh, this video is going to show you guys how to safely operate the bandsaw and it'll help you pass the test. So again, first step with using this tool is to make sure that I'm prepared. Sleeves up, hoodie tassels in, I don't have an ID badge, jewelry, long hair, or headphones to worry about. So I'm ready to test. Uh, not ready to test, I'm ready to cut. Safety glasses, of course. All right, so this is the bandsaw. This is my favorite tool in the shop. It's one of the most capable tools. It's one of the most powerful tools. And as long as you set it up properly, it is one of the safest tools to use. The way this tool operates, why don't you come over here, I'm going to show you how, how this works inside. It's called a bandsaw because the blade itself is one big rotating ribbon of teeth. This is a 93 and a half inch long blade. There are six teeth per inch. You can do the math on how many teeth are on this thing. It cuts very smooth. One of the test questions ask you if it's important to have these guards in place before using it. And yes, the lower wheel needs to be behind metal when you use it. All right. So is the upper one. And the upper one. Um, next thing you need to set up is what's known as the blade guide. Back knob here loosens it. It just hangs there once it's loose. And this protects you from the blade, it also guides the blade. The blade is bendy on this tool. So we want this guide as close to the wood as we can get. In fact, <clears throat> a quarter inch from the material is what you guys will see on the test. And that stops you from getting my hand in there. So here's how I like to set it up. I put the wood on the side of the blade. I lower the guide onto the wood and now I've got a bunch of friction. So all I do is I lift the wood a little bit. Oh, lock that. Lift the wood a teeny tiny bit, lock it, and then watch right here when I lower the wood. There's my gap. So the wood can move freely, and my finger is not gonna easily touch that blade. Now it could touch up here, so you still have to be really careful. Let's take a look at how a cut operates on this. The material needs to be flat on the table, so don't angle it like that. I'll show you in a little bit how to do an angled cut. Material's flat. We have what's known as the path of cut right here. I'm gonna keep my fingers out of that path of cut so I don't cut my finger. I'm also gonna keep my fingers at least two inches away from that blade at all times. So there's no chance that I can get into that blade. Let's take a look. The tool will sometimes shake a little bit, that's okay. But if you hear anything funny, or you see anything different than this, let one of your instructors know. Fingers two inch away, my thumb is not in that path of cut, and I'm gonna smoothly drive the wood into the blade. This tool is capable of making curved cuts. If I try to curve too hard, and smell so if you get an A line like this, you'll actually see some sparks. That's not good. And you'll see the blades start to come out of the machine. That's not good either. If I try to back out of this situation, I'm gonna start pulling the blade out again. This is a bad situation to be in. So what I'm gonna do is turn off the machine and wait for it to stop spinning. Mr. Wilson, do we ever walk away from this machine when it's still spinning? Absolutely not. It's quiet in the shop now but if this tool is spinning and off, 
the other rest of the shop might be loud. Nobody will know that it's moving. People could put themselves in a dangerous position. So always monitor it while that blade's moving. Okay, so now I can be a little bit more aggressive pulling this out. Uh, you can even take another piece of wood and hold that blade in place to remove it easily. But when you're trying to back out of a cut, so this is backing out of a cut, you always have the machine off when you do that. Um, you can pull this blade off of these wheels by backing out of a cut while it's running. Um, that's very loud, it's very scary, it's not typically dangerous, um, but it's a pain in the butt, so don't do it. Turn off the tool before you back out of a cut. All right. Um, if you guys end up with a little piece of material like this, two inches away, I'm not in the path of cut. If I put my finger in there, I mean to get closer than two inches away from that blade. The test tells you to turn off the machine completely before you remove that material. So on the test, you're supposed to turn the blade off, turn the machine off, have the blade stop before you get in there. I will also give you permission to use a piece of scrap wood to remove that because your fingers never get closer than two inches. All right, I told you before that you need to have the material flat against the table. Come on down here, let's take a look at something. This table is actually uh, rotatable, which means if I wanna cut 90 degrees like I was, I should go and measure that blade with what's called a square and make sure that that blade is 90 degrees because it may not be. So let's say I want to cut, let's do a 30 degree angle. Brian, could you get a, a view of this back where my hand is? Mm -hmm. So there's another knob down here. So there's one here and here. Use these to secure the table. Boy, this feels really complex. I'm going to grab another tool. This is called a miter gauge, and it's usually just sitting around the table saws. Now this is going to make sure that I drive that cut straight. I have to bring the guide up a little bit. Bring it on the material. Lift the material up a little bit, tighten it, now I can move freely. Miter's going to guide my cut. I am not going to make any adjustments to this tool while it's spinning. That's on the test. Don't make any adjustments while it's spinning. Come down here, loosen both knobs, bring myself back to zero degrees, tighten both knobs. And now, the tool is ready to walk away from. Hey, wait a minute. What? Sh shouldn't that guide be down? And shouldn't you sweep it off? Yes. So, if I leave this guide up, here's what happens. The next kid's gonna come, and he's gonna put this wood down, and he's gonna start cutting, because he can. But look at that. His finger can get into the blade. Ow. So, yeah, I was right. So if you leave this tool, I want to hear this sound. This forces the next person to have to adjust that guide to the proper height, and it helps keep them safe. So when you're finished using a tool, remove all of your scrap. 
put away any accessories, and use a brush, or I use the hot air I'm full of. To cook, clean up the workstation, move your safety glasses, put the scrap away, and you're finished up. Thank you guys for watching, and feel free to watch this video again, because there's a lot of information in it. If you ever want to do a cut on this and you're not sure how to do it, ask your instructor and we'll make sure that you're safe and successful. Take care, guys. See you in the next video.